I'm on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., and in this video, I'm going to be visiting the Smithsonian Castle, the original Smithsonian building, as well as the Frieger Gallery of Art, which is uh, Asian and American art. Um, so let's go check these out. I love L'Enfant's uh, plan for the city. Um, all these Smithsonian museums and buildings weren't built until, uh, uh, the, well, the castle here was 1840s. Um, he did plan for this National Mall to have uh, museums and uh, places for the arts and uh, learning. And uh, it's so awesome. All of the world's greatest museums, or some of them, it's right along here. And it has all the monuments over there. And there is the Washington Monument. I'm now going to be heading into the Freer Gallery of Art. This was the first art museum of the Smithsonian Institution. The building was built alongside the castle in 1923. I'm going to head inside now. This collection was started by Detroit Railroad car manufacturer Charles Lang Freer who had a lot of money and started buying art with it that was popular at the time among wealthy people. It mainly comprises of Asian art like this guardian from Japan carved completely out of wood. Some Indian art, this Shiva statue is over 1000 years old. These carvings show the story of the birth of the Buddha, and apparently in the story, baby Buddha talked. The Islamic art is mainly ceramics, made by these civilizations that occupied modern day Iran and Syria and other areas. Beautiful Japanese screens made in the Edo period, so in the early 1600s. Egyptian pharaoh head. Art from the period when Zen Buddhism reached Japan around the 1100s, along with its styles of Chinese ink painting and calligraphy. This is a red king, and this was made to be threatening, but also to remind believers of his benevolence. Freer also collected some American art, and this is a portrait of him by James McNeil Whistler. He had a lot of paintings of women, but apparently he was staunchly anti-feminist. This is Breakfast in Logia by John Singer Sargent, Landscape with Goats by Sargent, Early Evening by Winslow Homer. The gallery has the most James McNeil Whistler paintings I'd ever seen, including lots of his famous nocturnes, which are night scenes with dark blues, along with some other colors.
And this is the most incredible thing here, the Peacock Room. Whistler's masterpiece of interior decorative mural art. He created this in 1876 and 1877 in the Anglo-Japanese style, and it was a dining room in London. When he almost completed it, Whistler had a major falling out with the owner, and apparently he snuck into the home and painted the two peacocks there, meaning the artist and patron fighting. Whistler and the proprietor Leyland uh, fired him because of his unchecked artistic vision. Freer bought it in 1904 and had it shipped to the United States and installed in his own home in Detroit and then it was moved here to Washington DC. These are some Korean pots and antiquities. A funerary bench from the Xi Dynasty in China. Lots of early Chinese Buddhist sculptures. The relief is the oldest object in the museum. That is a Qing Dynasty map of the Grand Canal from the early 18th century. There's the S. Dillon Ripley Center. I don't think anything's in there, but along with the Freer Gallery, um, the Sackler Gallery, which is the other Asian art museum, and the National Museum of African Art are all actually underground. This is probably the best example of American Gothic architecture in the world. President Polk did lay the cornerstone of the building. It's such an awesome building. That's not a statue of James Smithson, it's of Joseph Henry, I don't know who that is. The castle was fully completed in 1852, had a lot of fireproofing work done to it over the decades, and originally contained administrative offices and some exhibits and displays. That is the original cardboard model by architect James Renwick of the castle. He also designed St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. The main room is still set up like the old time historical museum displays, and it's a jumble of artifacts from all the different collections and museums. And inside the castle is the tomb of James Smithson, who was an English scientist, and he never came to the United States but he was the major donor for the founding and beginning of the Smithsonian Institution. He died in Genoa, Italy in 1829 and was buried there. In the early 1900s, the cemetery was about to be removed and with the news of this, telephone inventor Alexander Graham Bell went to Genoa and he took Smithson's remains back with him. The tomb was designed by Mount Rushmore sculptor Gutzon Borglum. Right next to the castle is the second building of the Smithsonian Institution, the Arts and Industries building, built in the late 19th century. It used to be the main national museum of the Smithsonian, and uh, it's such an awesome building, and uh, it just went a fi through a five-year renovation, but uh, it's still closed because the uh, Republicans have gutted all the money for putting the building to use. So. Uh, 
it's just there. And this is the Smithsonian carousel. It's not free to ride on like the museums. The carousel was built in the 40s and used to be at the Gwyn Oak Amusement Park in Baltimore. And uh, this is actually a piece of civil rights history that uh, no one really knows about. Um, that park was segregated for whites only. And on the same day that Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech, right out back there, um, a black girl finally got to ride on the carousel for the first time. The National Mall is the center of tourism. There's like a bazillion food trucks everywhere. That odd circular building is the Hirshhorn Museum. It's uh, the Smithsonian's Museum of Contemporary and uh, Modern Art. I was planning to get to it, but uh, just ran out of time. But there's a Calder sculpture and a Roy Lichtenstein brushstroke thing back there. Though I can't go into the museum, I thought I would at least look around the sculpture garden a bit. Wasn't expecting them to have a Murders of Calais by Rodin. He didn't sculpt this one, this is a cast from the 50s. There's a lot of them in different museums, but always cool to see. Rodin's definitely one of the best sculptors. This is the first sculpture of Henry Morse I've seen that aren't just awkward shapes like their heads are. It's full body. This is called The Wishing Tree and it's an idea by Yoko Ono. I'll put my wish right there. The ambiance is really ruined by all the ice cream trucks. <laughs> all right, so I really love the Smithsonian. Um, of course, the castle is cool. Really enjoyed the Freer Gallery, and at least I got to look around the Hirshhorn a bit. Uh, but anyways, if you like this video, then please check out all my other Smithsonian videos, as well as all my other videos in general. And uh, please consider subscribing as well. Thanks for watching.